Listen up, Nigerian youth. This is for anyone between 15 and 40 in Nigeria. Make sure every Nigerian youth between 15 and 40 sees this video. I'm going to tell you two things that if you do them, you will win this battle. If you don't, forget it. Listen very carefully. Now, uh, in 1999, a woman got married and she didn't have a baby for almost two decades. Eventually, you know, she took in and something was in her stomach. Now, when she went to the hospital, incidentally, she delivered not a baby, but a fibroid. So, you see, a movement without strategy is like a pregnancy without a baby. A movement without strategy is like a pregnancy that produced a fibroid. That's what we witnessed in the past two, three weeks. Now, Pharaoh of Egypt, the ancient monarch, had a dream. What does that have to do with the NSAS protests and everything going on in Nigeria? A lot. Because there are two types of youth in Nigeria, as the past two weeks have demonstrated. So Pharaoh had a dream. He saw two types of cows. The first cow was scrawny scrawny you know looking diseased and then you could see the the, the skeleton you know of, of the cows very very scrawny like broomsticks then he saw another set of seven cows fat well fed you know plump you know horrible cows but guess what it was a scrawny cows that swallowed and ate up the fat cows and after they swallowed and ate up the fat cows, they still remained like that. It's as if they hadn't even eaten anything. What does this mean? There are two kinds of Nigerian youth, as we've seen in the past two or three weeks. The first Nigerian youth, which I will call Youth One, were the ones who started the NSAS protest. They organized that protest with class, so much so that everybody in the world was saying, I am proud of the Nigerian youth. They didn't destroy any car. They didn't destroy anybody's thing. They raised money for people in need. There was a young woman who had prosthetic legs or whose legs were cut off. They raised millions of naira on the spot for her. There was a woman, you know, uh, by the roadside who sold groundnuts or something like that. They raised more than two million naira on the spot by themselves. Somebody's car was broken. They raised money on the spot and did it. They were very peaceful. They were classy. They were, you know, they organized entertainment, they organized food, they organized money. In fact, it baffled and terrified the government. So, that is Youth One. And I'll call the Youth One Builders. That's the name for their persona. They are Builders. But there's Youth Two in Nigeria. And these Youth Two are the ones, you know, who took over after the Lekito gets shooting. They are the ones who are going around burning everything on their way, burning malls, destroying businesses that people borrowed money to buy, to, to build. They're the ones, you know, attacking police stations and then taking guns, taking ammo from the armory. They are the ones, you know, going to Thomas Estate to wage war with ordinary citizens who are also suffering like themselves. They are the ones that were recruited by security agencies according to many video clips that we saw to attack youth one so now so this is where it gets interesting just like pharaoh's cows the builders that is youth one came built built such an asset of goodwill built such an asset of intellectual uh you know prowess and then the youth two just like pharaoh's scrawny cows came swallowed up everything that youth one had done so this chronic house which is youth two ate up and swallowed the builders which is youth one this youth two i would call the burners they're the ones burning down everything they've burned down public property they've burned down the npa they've burned down police stations they've burned down all kinds of places now it turns out youth one therefore that your greatest enemy your greatest challenge is not the government the gr your greatest challenge is youth too these guys you know who are going around and burning everything and therefore here are two things you must do the two strategies number one 
if you are to win this war, you must reach out to youth too. You must reach out to these burners. You see, because they are very accessible to the government. Whatever you build, these politicians would use them to destroy. It's been happening. That's an ancient strategy. They keep doing that. In the north, they will use religion. All they need to do is tell somebody, oh, somebody tore the Quran or somebody urinated in front of the mosque. By the time, uh, the, the wake of the crisis, uh, from the, after the wake of the crisis, thousands of people have been slaughtered by this youth, this same youth too. In the south, they will play up ethnic sentiments. Before you know it now, they will say, uh, they will make it Yoruba versus Igbo fight. And then people will now slaughter themselves in Lagos. So reach out to this youth too. Um, use reverse psychology. Use, there's, a, there's a way you know, to work on the crowd mind, on the mind of the crowd. Uh, reach out to them before the government reaches out to them. And let them know that all these people who are recruiting them to burn down everything, that their children are not here. Their children are not among them, among the people burning these things. All their children are somewhere in Saudi Arabia or in Europe or in America somewhere you know very very safe so every burning that they are doing they are burning we're actually burning ourselves and then the burning needs to stop today the burning needs to stop right now the second part of the strategy youth one is to realize the source of the problem the real monster in nigeria predates the birth of your father and even your grandfather it started right from the 1930s the invasion from the north of osman Danfodio. And then later that same century, with the invasion of southern Nigeria by the British uh, Empire, the then British Empire. And then that marriage of the British and the Caliphate gave rise. There's a lot of culmination to what became 1914 and to what eventually became the 1999 Constitution. And in that 1999 Constitution, all the problems that you're seeing in Nigeria are enshrined. It's amazing. A constitutional lawyer once showed me, and I was shocked. The corruption is in that document. The lack of infrastructure is in that document. You cannot develop. You cannot even, like they have these exclusive uh, items. If you want to build, um, if you want to build, uh, uh, let, let's say, a railway, you can't because it's in the exclusive document. It's that same document that sequestered all your property all the land in the in the country and put it in the hands of few people that they call um, you know the government they are the ones who will give you see for your property they're the ones who own everything under the ground behind your house like you've seen in the niger delta and all that so the problem is the 1999 constitution if we take it down we will not have a chance as a country to define what we want and then for each region to define the pace of their progress. Peace is more important. Justice is more important than killing and the killings that are going on everywhere. And then the North can have a chance to develop at their pace. And the South can have a chance to develop at their pace. Anything besides these two things I have told you is like that pregnancy that gives birth to fibroid. Uh, but I trust that you understand this and that we are going to work together to bring down the monster that is producing all these problems that we and then save the future for our children yet unborn. Now, whatever happens, keep showing up because you have no idea what's coming your way next and watch this space for more. Bye for now.